tipsy cause I've been sipping on Henny. I got the study of my vision and she ain't from the city. And she ain't foreign and she boring. Love the way you twerk it, shawty. Throwing money on her own, I call it independent, shawty. What's up, everybody? I'm Hugo Rabbit. We are here on Forza Horizon 4. So if you guys did miss the Gymkhana 10 video that came out, uh, you guys are missing a lot. So I figured today's episode we would be racing some of the Gymkhana cars. But it's all about that dirt racing today. So a lot of people are commenting on videos asking me how I can even control anything in here on a G920. So I was going to address that today. And uh, maybe with some little tips that I can find that might help in the endeavor of driving a G920 on dirt. Just my headset volume. So we are just going up the toge in the uh, Gymkhana 10 Cosworth Escort. Same thing. Get wrecked. So we are just heading up this uh, toge right now in the Escort. And uh, we're just uh, driving up to the Rally Dirt Race that is up here, which I think is probably the sketchiest race that I could see as I just got some snapback because it looks like it goes right on the cliff sides so we are going to be racing the uh, ST from Jukana 10 but so before we get into the race I'm going to show you guys my wheel settings it's the same wheel settings I use for everything drifting racing dirt driving everything like that so hopefully I can give you guys a little bit of a some tips on trying to uh, drive in dirt because a lot of people are getting frustrated with it and stuff like that. Um, and it's just really about not uh, oversteering and st steering very little and not overcorrecting the car and making it oscillate and get very crazy. We are on a G920 with a 350mm wheel. So we are going to go into Scramble and some Rally Monsters. And I wanted to actually race the Gymkhana 10 Ford Fiesta ST. So we are going to race that here today so like I said some tips and tricks on driving in dirt um, try not to overcorrect the car try not to over and unsettle the car because the car will lose traction and go off track very easily uh, it you know I found smoother steering trying not to overcook the car into a turn and trying to be a little bit more modest in driving helps keep the car a little bit stable so we are gonna race this cliffside scramble, which I feel like is sketchy because it goes around the outer border. And uh, I'm worried I'm gonna fall off the cliff. So, so that is what we're gonna do. So, but before we get into that, I am gonna show you guys my wheel settings because uh, so that you guys know what settings I'm running. So as my wheel settings are what I'm running at right now, all of this obviously is set how it is. Vibration scale is off at all the way at zero. So, cause you get vibration feel with the force feedback anyways. So I turn the vibration scale off so it's not chattering the wheel so much. Centering spring I have 100, wheel damping scale I have at 70. Uh, force feedback under steer 100, minimum force at 50, and I'm at 900 degrees of rotation. So these are my basic wheel settings. These are the settings that I use for drifting, the settings I use for racing, the settings I use for rally, every setting I have that I've been using for the ride before. I did up the wheel damping scale since the last videos when I did my thing just to get a little bit more stiffness in the wheel um, because I like the feel of the wheel in Force 7 after the Force Feedback update. So that's what we're looking at today for our settings. So we're going to get right into this race and uh, have a little fun. And we're going to see how we can handle the dirt and tarmac in this ST from Gymkhana 10. Like I said, if you guys miss Gymkhana 10, um, you guys are probably under a rock and you know don't pay attention to uh, important things like that. So, as you know, we are on dirt and the car is not super out of control. It's not spinning on me. It's not becoming super loose right there. It got a little loose, but I just feathered off the gas, gave myself a quick correction in my steering, and was able to handle the car and handle the slide. Now, it, it, it does help if you can antis anticipate what the car is gonna do, like putting a car purposely into a slide and being able to know when you're gonna correct it is probably the best best point of that. So this is a two lap race, I realized, and now we get to the sketchy part on the mountainsides. So if you've noticed, my car is not really losing 
losing grip on me. It's not super, uh, super crazy. It's not like oscillating back and forth. I'm not really getting too much oversteer. I'm not getting too much understeer. It's kind of just right there and it feels pretty good. It does help to have a very decently set up car. This is out of the box uh, ST. I did not change anything. This is just how we got it. So, all oh, these jumps. The jumps are a big thing that unsettle cars a lot because what you don't realize is when your front wheels are in the air, you turn a little bit too much because the steering wheel gets a little bit lighter like that and you're over overdriving the car as soon as it hits the ground. So, I know I'm not like blasting past these guys. These guys are, I believe, on expert driving mode. So, I'm not blasting past them, but you know, this isn't a section of the track where blasting past them would be a good idea. So, I'm trying to just stay smooth on my steering because that helps a lot. And then I caught up to them right there very quick. So, tips I can give for racing in dirt is just being really smooth on steering helps. Not over driving the car, not throwing too much into the steering wheel when you don't need it. And uh, over correcting is a big issue because if you over correct the car, it's just like in drifting, you over correct the car, you have to recorrect it again. And then you just end up in this big over correction battle where you're not able to actually correct the car. So as you can see, I was able to get back in first and I'm not really having to fight the car too much. Like right there, the car got a little loose, so I feathered off the gas a little bit and uh, eased on my steering, and I was able to keep control of the car. It didn't really get out of my hands, and it didn't, you know, get too far out of control and spin out. But if you also notice, you know, staying in, for me, staying in middle, middle to uh, middle to low or sometimes high RPM bands helped me. Uh, it's just my driving style, um, the way the car is handles and the way the car likes, but. So this is just, I mean, driving on a G920 in Horizon 4 is not an easy feat. Um, it's not something that you can just like pick up and do. Um, for sure, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and a little bit of getting used to how the wheel reacts and how the car reacts. Like right there, I could have lost it, but I just got off the gas a little bit and was able to keep control of the car and manage, manage that little wobble that it got but because I see a lot of people saying you know how do you drive this how do you even control a car in Horizon 4 it feels like sh feels like crap you know you know it's it's an arcade sim so it's not gonna feel perfect it's not gonna feel like a Seto it's not gonna feel like you know Forza Motorsport 7 you know it is an open world game so it's not gonna be a perfect simulation because of the fact of it's open world and you have all these different terrains and all these different weather aspects. You know, if a, co if a company could make a open world, full sim feeling racing game, they would make millions. And right there, I pulled the e-brake and I shouldn't have, and I kind of lost control of the car a little bit, but uh, I did kind of screw myself on that one. So we're gonna try and take him through this last turn. So I can still get the win. There we go. So you can make a big mistake like that and uh, still recover from it. But so that was the, probably one of the sketchiest dirt races I've done recently. But I was able to control the car. It didn't lose oscillate. It didn't control. So try the wheel settings out. Maybe it's the settings you have. Maybe it's just overcorrection too much. Um, the bigger rim does help a little bit in control because I feel that I can. Uh, Correct quicker. I know you're racing in the island Conqueror, but I'll be keeping the Horizon Dirt Series active right. as well. Sounds good Partly to me. Partly because we have to keep things official, but mostly for all the stories I can take back to the mainland. Sounds good to me. But the bigger rim does help because I think I can correct a little bit quicker. Um, so it does help a little bit than a, a smaller Logitech wheel. But if you get used to how the wheel head reacts, you get used to how the car reacts, you know, then racing on dirt or racing on anything on a wheel is actually a little bit easier so I think we're gonna do one more dirt race if we can find one we should have one do we have another dirt race somewhere we do 
we have a little uh, dirt series exhibition. So we're gonna race over to here. We're probably gonna switch up to the maybe the escort and uh, see how that handles. But so t some tips on dirt, just like right there, the car starts sliding, and I just got off the gas a little bit to uh, adjust the car and uh, get the car back centered. Getting off the gas, hitting the clutch, going clutch in does help. Um, so it's just things that I've picked up over time of playing the games. And I know a lot of people are saying, you know, Forza Horizon 4 is crap on a wheel. It, it's it's not that it's crap on a wheel. It's just, it takes a little bit getting used to. Like right there, this is where a lot of people, are, they overcorrect and then the car just gets really squirrely. And then they think, oh, well, the game just handles like crap. It, it's, it's more so getting used to how the game handles and reacts and adapting to it. It's just like switching between a set of Corsa or Forza Motorsport 7. You have to get used to it and understand how the game reacts in order to, you know, you have arrived at your get a good handling, um, good handling run. So it looks like we're at three laps here. I think we're going to switch up cars if it's going to let me. And I feel like I want to race the Gymkhana 10 Ford Escort. And uh, we're going to rip the Escort here in this dirt race to end this episode off. But so some tips and tricks I have for you guys, like I said, don't overcrack the car, try and run smooth steering, and uh, try the wheel settings. And you know what? Just stick with it because don't get frustrated with it. You will you'll get it and you'll enjoy every minute of it once you do. Because I enjoy every minute driving on the wheel and it's, it's so much more fun. I tried playing controller and it's just not as fun for me anymore. I enjoy driving on a wheel and it's just how it is. So I've adapted to the game with the wheel. I think a lot of people are just not adapting to the game and that's what it is. Oh, is that it? That was a deer. All right, so let's rip this and see how this one handles. Now this car is a little bit sketchier than that uh, Fiesta ST. So, and it's raining. So we may have to uh, definitely keep control of our car through here and be very easy on throttle and our steering so that we don't overcorrect and completely oscillate our car and lose control. Cut in here, now we're, oh, now we're on mud. All right, well, mud is definitely uh, fun to drive in and it can get very sketchy really fast. Sorry, excuse me, coming through, thrill the killer. Don't miss that, thank you. I was gonna miss that checkpoint because this car is sliding everywhere right now. But if I feather off the gas a little bit and uh, ease up on the throttle, uh, I'm able to regain control of the car. So that's that's mainly probably my biggest tip: throttle out a little bit, not when in doubt throttle out. I mean, when in doubt throttle in. When in doubt, you know, throttle out a little bit, you know, and just try and stay very smooth on your steering. Quick, quick. Uh, quick movements like that could very unsettle a car a lot and just try and anticipate what the car is going to do and usually driving in like a first person mode it's easier to anticipate it because you can actually see how the car is reacting in a first person so we're going to go into first person here so you can actually kind of see how the car is going to react sooner in first person than you can in third and you can kind of like right there you kind of correct it and get back in the right line for it so maybe racing in first person well i know a lot of people give me uh give me crap for racing in third person but i do it for you guys but racing in first person definitely is a challenge in itself but it, it kind of helps as well so we're gonna go back to third person just because i would enjoy the sounds and the scenery Oh, totally missed that turn. So even this car being as slippery as this car, I'm still, I don't know why I grabbed my handbrake. I'm still able to get control of the car and not totally lose control, just tap. And when I start to lose control, like right there, I'll just get off the gas a little bit, regain the control of the car and then ease myself back on throttle. I know easing in the throttle helps a lot more too, rather than just, you know, going straight on throttle. Like, rolling into the throttle definitely helps. Ugh! 
this mud is very unforgiving. The cart is getting a little understeer on me and uh, flying a little bit out of place. And then we go to dirt and pavement. Thought we were gonna miss that checkpoint, but we didn't. We good. So I hope these tips help you guys in dirt racing and I hope you guys don't get frustrated on the wheel and continue to drive on the wheel because it is a lot of fun on the wheel. Once you are able to get it and handle it, it's a lot of fun. So make sure you guys follow me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. All the found in the description box below. So until next time, guys, like thank you guys for watching. I'm Evil Rabbit, and I'm out.